Let's look at Joshua chapter 1 this morning. Let's begin at verse number 1. Great book of Joshua. Um, speaks of um, the victorious life that we can have in Christ as we go into the, the promised land, uh, spiritually speaking, uh, with the Lord. The Bible says in verse number 1, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land I do give to them, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And God has given us an opportunity to, to walk closely with Him and to have victory in our life over all of our enemies. Think of how many enemies we have against us. and The devil, ourselves, the, our flesh, the world okay, that combat us daily. And God has promised us the victory. And that's what He's promising here to Joshua. And we, by the grace of God, can live in the victory. When Jesus died, and he, said it was a fi when he, he said it's finished. Remember he said that? That was victory that day. That was victory over the devil. That was victory over the curse of sin on this earth. That was victory over hell. Amen. Then he raised himself from the dead. He sealed the deal when he raised himself from the dead. Amen. That was just like, yeah. That was a, the last nail in the coffin for, for Satan. He knew then, oh man, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And that same resurrected power is in you as a believer. Because he's, he made you alive. Remember, you were dead? You remember that? When you were dead to God? You were dead to the Bible? Dead to worshiping God in the right way? You know, and loving God? You were dead to all that. But then he made you alive. Now it's like, oh, I get it now. Well, this, this is great. I'm alive. I woke up. Right? <laughs> Isn't it nice to be awake? <laughs> you're, not in a, you're not in a spiritual coma anymore. Amen. Amen. Came out of the spiritual coma. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? And just as Joshua and the Israelites experienced that victory in the promised land in Canaan, we can live in that victory by the grace of God. And I say by the grace of God. As we lean on Him, as we get closer to Him, as we develop that close walk with God. Right? He says here in uh, verse number 3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, speaking of the Mediterranean, uh, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Will you take that promise today personally to yourself? The Lord saying to you, I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. <laughs> That's a good verse to meditate on, isn't it? We're going to talk a little bit about meditation today. Look at verse number 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Because we, we serve a strong God. Not because we're strong. Because we're, we're little sheep. We're frail. And um, the big bad wolves can, can grab us and, you know, they can scare us, right? We scare easily. We're little sheep. But we've we got a big strong shepherd. He's big and strong. <laughs> he can handle all those wolves. Get out of here. Leave my sheep alone. <laughs> but we've got to stay close to the shepherd. Don't be wandering off and think you're going to be okay. These promises here are conditional on us walking with God. Right? If Joshua chose not to walk with the Lord, then these promises would not apply. Right? God expects us to stay close to Him. It's then that we can experience the blessing of His protection and His love. We can't think that, well, I love you, I love you, Jesus, but I'm going to go off and do my own thing now. And expect God's blessings and Him just, okay, all right, yeah, that's okay. No, 
It, it don't work that way. Now, he still loves you. He'll never stop loving you. But if you want to wander, he'll let you wander. But you're in for a rough road. Real rough road. And as a child of God, you can't do that and not feel guilty. Now, maybe when you're lost, you could get away with it, it seems. But I mean, you still had a conscience, but you could sear your conscience. And sin didn't bother you as much. But now, oh my. You can't do that. It just, you, you'll be miserable. I believe a backslidden sheep, a Christian, is more miserable than a lost person when they're out in sin. Sin bothers you now. That's a good thing. That's a sign you're saved. Right? Amen. So what it ought to do is ought to, when we get that, we just it should be like, hey, hey, get right with God, you know? It should help us to come back to Him. Remind us, you know? Hey, you're one of God's kids. You can't just go off and do whatever you want to do. Right? Get back to the shepherd. Get back to the one that loves you and protects you. So be strong, verse 6, and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. And we can in the Lord. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it uh, to the right hand or to the left. Uh, stay on the path, a narrow way, right? The path that God's given us to take. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. In other words, you're going to keep um, uh, these words, okay? You're going to, um, almost like a, a cow that regurgitates. It just, or um, chews the cud. It, you're, just going to, you're going to keep chewing on God's word, right? Uh, meditating, it says here. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid. Satan wants you to be afraid. He's always wanting us to, to live in a, a spirit of fear, but God's not giving us a spirit of fear. Right? A love of power and love and of a sound mind. So be strong and of a good courage. God wants His sheep to be valiant sheep for Him. Okay? Strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Wherever God leads you, whatever He calls you to do, He's going to be there right alongside you. To give you that strength and that grace and that power, that protection and that love. As long as we stay close to Him. Amen? What a blessing. So I would draw your attention today uh, to that verse number 8 where it talks about the book of the law. This book. We have this book today to follow. And it is, you might say, your map for life, your road map to follow. And if you'll follow it, you'll, you'll stay on course. You'll stay out of a lot of trouble. Amen? Uh, you won't get off on the wrong road. There's a lot of dead-end roads in life. A lot of dangerous roads. A lot of roads that are right beside a cliff. You don't want to go down those roads. You could mess up your life. But if you follow God's map He's given us for life, oh, you'll be in safety. Now, who would take off on a trip nowadays without some kind of GPS or a map or, or something? If you've never been there before, who would just say, well, well, we'll get there eventually. I think it's east. Let's, let's just head east. You know? But isn't that the way a lot of people live their lives? They got very little direction. They're not following God. They're not following His Word. Right? They're going outside of God's protection and love. And they think everything's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. You're headed for danger, right? Destruction. That's right. So God gives us his, the book. We have the book. And it tells us here that we need to meditate on His Word. So important. So, meditate means continued thought, revolving in the mind, 
over and over. Serious contemplation on the Word of God. There's a real blessing, amen, in meditating on God's Word. So it's one thing to read God's Word and then to put it down, but it's another thing to meditate on it. Okay? Yeah. Just continually be bringing maybe um, a certain passage that God gave you for the day, maybe that morning as you read your Bible, and you try to meditate on that throughout the day. Not just, okay, I read my Bible, I'm good. And you set it down. But if you have to, write it down, a little index card, and keep it with you that day, and pull it out from time to time. And, uh, oh yeah, that's a verse I read this morning. And try to keep that in your mind. It's going to help you a lot. Amen? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You kind of, it's almost like you're, you're talking to yourself, kind of. It's in your mouth, right? It's there. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So meditation, so important. Let's look at just for a moment um, this morning how to have good success. Now the world says you need to get a good education and you need to get a big paying job and you need to have this and that. and Whoever has the most toys wins, I guess. You know, and that, that's the world's philosophy. The more toys you get, the you know, more successful you are, right? But we know that's not true. It's not true. My dad would just tell me he was over. He's over in Toronto right now, and he was out uh, shopping or something, and uh, met this gentleman, and uh, older gentleman, and uh, a businessman, and a uh, very wealthy man. But dad noticed he was just very looked very down, downcast, right? Dad went over to him, started talking with him. The guy didn't want to talk. But my dad is not one to take no for an answer. He just, he persists. And, and God can use that, you know. Now, I'm, I'm more of a type, okay, okay, I'll leave you alone. You know? <laughs> but it was God's will that he persists with this gentleman. That's another thing, too. It's important to be led of the Spirit. Because maybe sometimes God does want you to persist with a certain person, right? They don't want to talk, but they need to talk. Well, such was the case with this gentleman. And he opened up to Dad. He said, he said, I don't talk to just anybody. He said, I can't believe I'm opening up to you like I am, but it was God's will, right? Well, he starts sharing about how that last night uh, he was going to commit suicide. But he said, I, I'd put it off till tonight. He said, tonight I was going to do it. And so God had my dad at the right place at the right time to speak to that man. Wealthy man, you know? Uh, he deals, he's an art dealer, he deals in art, um, you know, sells paintings and, and so forth, really expensive paintings and art and stuff. And, and dad witnessed to him, shared the Lord with him, and uh, had a real good witness. And he says to my dad, he says, what's your name? I said, John. He said, uh, they call me John the Baptist. <laughs> says, Just a, some people call my, my dad John the Baptist, kind of a, kind of a nickname. He said, I want you to come out to my vehicle. i got, I got something to show you. So he takes him out to his vehicle, and uh, in the back of his vehicle he had these, these paintings, right? And he pulls one out, and it's a reprint of a famous painting of John the Baptist. Oh. And, and he, said, he said, this is worth hundreds of dollars. So I'm going to give this to you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, incredible. So I had a, had a great, great witness with the gentleman. But just goes to show you, you know, just because you're successful in the world and it seems like you got it all together, that's not what real success is all about. It's true. Yes. Yeah. That's right. The eyes of man are never satisfied, right? The more you get, the more you want. And a lot of that stuff is it's a lot of trouble. Big houses, big headaches. You know, the more toys, the more stuff you got to look after. It's like, ah, right? It can actually be a real pain. Um, the person that lives a more simple life actually has a lot less headaches. <laughs> to tell you the truth. Yes, there is. To be content, amen, uh, is, a, is a great thing. Godliness with contentment is great gain, the Bible says. Great gain. So I thought that was a blessing. The Lord using my dad to speak to that gentleman. And my dad, he has some very interesting escapades. Or, oh, 
he went to, I think it was Walmart after that, and um, they were in a long line, and some of, a lot of the cash registers were not open. And so, this is just my dad, he, he goes and finds a manager. Hey, we need to have some more registers open, right? And the manager said, yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're, we're bringing someone right now, uh, register number six, yep. And uh, so dad goes back to all the people waiting in the long line. He says, hey, come over here. Register number six. Come with me. Come with me. And nobody follows him right at first, right? Just look at me. Who's this idiot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes over to register number six. He says, Somebody's coming. Come on. And there, there was two young ladies that actually did go with him, right? Actually went over with him. Sure enough, the, the, the lady shows up, you know, to open the cash register and well, my dad, my dad hollers back at him and says, Hey, all you are unbelievers. That's what you are. <laughs> These two ladies, they're believers. You're unbelievers. You didn't believe me. <laughs> he said, he said, I'm going to pay for their bill. And it was like $50 or whatever, you know. He didn't care. And he, he paid for their purchase. He said, See, they're being blessed because they believe. You didn't want to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> this is right, right in Walmart. Right? All these people, Christmas shoppers, and busy. And well, then after they go through the line, he pays for their their purchases and that. I think he said it was fifty bucks or whatever. And uh, he says uh, to them, he says, "You know, ladies, the way you believe in me is how you must come to Christ. You must trust Him, and you trusted me that I said the cash register would be open. And that's how you must come to the Lord." So he got, got, got to witness to them. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and uh, these things just happen with my dad all the time, like that. Yeah. He's, but uh, thank God for my dad, my mom as well, who loved the Lord, been faithful all these years. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like my dad. <laughs> I'm like my mom. She's quiet and nice. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> Dad's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> oh, they're exact opposites. Oh man! But uh, Lord has a plan, amen. So, let's look at how to have good success this morning. Let's go to uh, now Psalm 19, if you would. Psalm 19, and we see here in this passage of just what the Word of God does for us as we meditate on it as we apply ourselves to it in order to have that good success that, that God wants us to have. And that's what's important. You know, um, you may feel the pressure from the world. You know, you need to succeed, you need to succeed. But just uh, nothing wrong with working hard and God blesses you in that. Nothing wrong with that. But don't be living for that or those or the things of this world. Make sure that your purpose, your aim, is, and your goal is to please God and do His will for your life. Okay? And if, if it may be at some point God wants you to move on or He wants you to give up that job, don't just hold on to these things sometimes. You know, maybe He's got a plan for you. Maybe He wants you to be a missionary. I tell the story of uh, William Borden. He lived back in the early 1900s. He died when he was, was he 25, 26, something like that. He was a millionaire kid. And for his uh, graduation present from high school, his parents gave him a trip around the world. For a whole year, he traveled the world. That was his present. So him and one of his best buddies, they just they went to all over the world, just visiting different countries, you know. Well, he was a, he was a saved young man. And while he was on that trip, God gave him a burden for the world and called him to be a missionary. So when he comes back, he tells his millionaire family, dad and mom, and I want to be a missionary. And they're like, what? And his friends are like, what? You want to be what? A missionary? What? You got everything. What are you talking about? You're going to get your father's business. What, what are you doing? You know? Right? And they thought he was nuts. But he was determined. As a young man, he was going to follow God. And he impacted thousands of young people because I believe he uh, did he go to Yale I think he went to Yale and uh, and Princeton as well yeah so he started these young people groups you know Bible 
groups and that, and um, just was very fervent for God, and just a great influence for them, right? And of course, they, they found out, you know, he'd surrender to be a missionary, and so really exciting. So he takes off, well, he feels that God had called him to China uh, to reach the, the Muslims there. I think it was in northern China. And so first he stops off, I think, in Egypt to uh, learn the Arabic language. And so it was while he was there, he contracted, was it meningitis? Meningitis. And uh, he ended up dying there. But he was, he was on his way uh, to China. But he still accomplished God's will because he influenced thousands by his zeal and his desire to live for God at such an early age, even though he was wealthy. You know, he, was, he left it all behind. And what a challenge he was. <laughs> and to this day, you know, William Borden is just, oh, what a testimony. Oh, my. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe not pastor a church, but, you know, they can be involved in the ministry, absolutely reaching souls, you know, absolutely. Yeah. So the Lord has a plan for you, right? So let's be looking to the Lord to, to guide us in, in his will for our life so that we can influence others as they see the Lord in us. Because the more you yield to Christ, the more they're going to see Jesus in you. And that's what's really going to attract them. Not your intelligence or your wealth or your whatever, your personality, but it's Jesus. And those other things don't matter so much, really. It's just how much you let Jesus shine out of you. That's what matters the most. Right? Uh, sometimes people that have a high intellect are a little snobbish. Right? Yeah. And we don't really want to be around them much. Because right. <laughs> they're snobs. Um, <clears throat> not everybody, but I'm just saying. It can happen. Sometimes we, we tend to be prideful because of you know, who I am and what I have and we were all naked when we came in the world. <laughs> and when we go out, we can't take nothing with us. You know? So God looks at us all the same. And he's willing to show himself strong in all of us if we'll be willing to you know, yield to him. Right? And so we see here, uh, I want to point out a few things here about God's word as we meditate in it. Um, first of all, the first thing would be how the law of the Lord in verse number 7 is perfect, converting the soul. Thank God for that day that His Word pierced my heart and showed me I was lost and converted my soul. Now we can apply this to ourselves uh, concerning our standing is perfect in the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? The Bible says in Romans 5.1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justify meaning to accept as righteous, on account of the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You've been justified. Isn't that awesome? Made righteous because of Jesus. Because you've accepted what He did for you, God sees you through the blood of His Son. When He sees you through that sinless blood, He sees you as sinless. You're standing before Christ. I'm not saying you're sinless now in this life. I'm just saying your standing is one of sinlessness before God. You're justified. <laughs> That's why we can go to heaven. Right? Amen? And we don't have to keep it. He keeps us. It's a done deal. He's taking care of all our sin. Isn't that wonderful? We could never do that. We could try to be good, but we could never be good enough. Amen? We'd end up messing up. We'd end up wearing a pink shirt or something sometime. You know? I'm just kidding. I'm just picking on Alex. It's purple. I know it is. <laughs> but thank God for our standing in Christ then look at the next thing in verse 7 there the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple so glad of the confidence God gives us that surety he gives us in his word that we know that we have the truth in him we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him so thankful that I know I'm in the right way. It's true. It's real. Right? You don't have to worry about it. Don't, there's no doubt. God removed all doubt. Because it was a supernatural work of God. This was not something I worked up myself. Or some church talked me into it. 
or some cult. Right? No, this, this came straight from God. <laughs> so I can have confidence in Him and in His Word. His, His Word does that for you. You meditate in His Word, it builds confidence in the Lord. That's why we've got to chew on it more. Amen? Get your Bible chewing gum out every morning. And get it in your mouth. Amen? And be chewing on the Word of God all day. It builds a confidence in the Lord. Then notice verse 8. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. It brings gladness to our hearts. Amen? God's Word. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. God's people should not be a downcast people. Now, I know there's times of bereavement. I know there's, there's difficulties we go through. But I would say majority, most of the time, we should be full of joy. Because God even gives us peace even through the hard times, through the rough stuff that we go through. And we go through rough stuff just like the lost. We're still in this sin-cursed earth. We're still in this flesh, right? One day, we'll get a glorified body. One day, we'll be with the Lord. But until then, we're going to go through some hard stuff. Tough times. But God gives us joy in the midst of all that gladness through His Word. Amen? Praise the Lord. Then the next thing, look at verse 8. Uh, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Our motives makes us pure, amen? And how we, how we walk and how we live with the, for the Lord. The eyes of your understanding, it says in Ephesians, being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling. We're looking for Him and what His will is for life, not our own any longer. We're living for Him. And what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Looking forward to inheriting one day what the Lord has for me, what He has for you. Heavenly rewards with God. Isn't that wonderful? We have so much to look forward to. Yeah. So God helps our motives to be right down here in this earth. Keeps us thinking right. Amen? All right, then another thing. The fear of the Lord, verse 9, is clean, enduring forever. God helps our conscience to be clean and right. Keep a pure mind, right? Let us draw near with a true heart and full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, keeping us uh, holy. Our bodies are the temple of the Lord, and God wants it to be a holy temple for Him to dwell in. The Word of God keeps our conscience right. It's a good thing to have a good conscience before God, clear. Isn't it nice to be clean, have a, have a, a purity, a, a cleanness? Isn't it wonderful to not only be clean on the outside, but clean on the inside? A lot of people are clean on the outside, but they're not clean on the inside. They're dirty on the inside. They're filthy on the inside. The Lord said about the Pharisees, they're full of dead men's bones. <clears throat> right? Like walking into an old grave. <clears throat> you know, everything's been rotten and decaying. And, <clears throat> right? Spiritually, though, without the Lord, we're a mess on the inside. Right? But the Lord cleans us up, doesn't He? And His Word keeps us clean. Keeps us, keeps us right. Our minds clean and pure. and Helps us to, to be renewed. Amen? In our minds. Verse 9, it says, The judgments of the Lord are true. God helps our allegiance uh, to our God. Helps us to stay true to Him. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We need to stay allegiant to our true king. The devil used to be our king, but he's not our king no more. Now we have the true king that we serve and live for. The king of kings. The lord of lords. May we be true to Him. As we meditate on God's word, it's going to help you to just to be allegiant, amen, to your commander. God, whatever you want today, amen, whatever you want from me in this life, I'm yours. That's what William Borden said to God. See, but Pastor Dottie died young. What great reward he's going to have in heaven. Think of how many, he's still impacting lives today by his testimony. Yeah. So, yeah, don't look at things the way the world looks at it. Okay? May God help us to see his perspective. Just live every day for God 
And no matter what comes, what happens, um, at least you can know that you died serving God, living for Him. You, you ended well. God wants us to end well. That brings me to my last point. The judgment of the Lord are righteous altogether. Our conclusion. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God wants you to end well. You stick with God. You meditate on His Word. Don't let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. It will help you to end well. And you've known, like the Apostle Paul, that you, you served God, you did His will, you pleased Him. I've fought a good fight, Paul said. I've kept the faith. I'm ready. I'm ready to go, Lord. And truly, the child of God, we can't lose. Amen? We live, live for God here in this life. That's great. Or if we die, we, we're with the Lord. Be absent from the body. Be present with the Lord. That'd be okay, too. Not that I'm looking to die, but... <laughs> it wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a bad thing. Not, not for a believer. You know? Uh, we don't want to stay here as long as God wants us to and serve Him. But if He wants to take us home, that's good, too. You know? Uh, it almost seems as though some believers, God's promoted early. Took them home, took them home early. Like Enoch, remember? God and Enoch were, were walking along one day and God said, uh, Enoch, why don't you just come on home with me? <laughs> oh, they were having such a good time, God just took him home with him. <laughs> Amen. Wouldn't you like to be so close to God? He says, oh, just come on to my house. Forget your house, just come on to mine. <laughs> Enoch died a young man at 300. Was he 300? Something like that. That was young back then. Because he lived to be almost close to 1,000 years old. Uh, Methuselah, was it 969 years? Can you imagine? But God, God helps us, amen, to finish well. Have a good conclusion to our life. So this book of the law helps our standing, our confidence in the Lord, our gladness, our motive, our conscience, our allegiance, our conclusion to be right. That's good success. Not what the world says. That's good success. So, you got the Word of God. Let's meditate. And go back to Joshua 1.8. Just for a moment. Joshua chapter 1. Let's look at that verse one more time here. Will you read it with me? All right, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Let's read it together. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So as you're meditating on God's word, He's going to help you then to apply it. Put it into practice. Right. It's not enough just to meditate. You've got to take it a step further than that. And put, put some legs on those prayers. Amen. Lord, I know uh, my neighbor needs Jesus. And you pray for them, right? You think about that. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. But maybe God wants you to take him a Christmas present or something. Or, he just, or a birthday present or uh, maybe some cookies or... Um, we want you to reach out to them, be kind to them, right? So you put some legs on those prayers. It helps you to do what you know that He's leading you to do. Right? Amen. So let's, let's have the success that God wants us to have. Let's be aiming for that. Not the world's success. The world's success, it's... I saw a picture one time of a guy that was on like a, a roller, like a, almost like a treadmill. And it was going real fast, you know, and there's this hook hanging down, right? And it's got like a $100 bill hanging in front of him. He's like, ah, he's trying to reach it, you know. And uh, that's the way it is with the world, you know. It's just, there's a, lot, a lot of you are just wasting your time, wasting your life away. Uh, that's right, that's right. It's almost like it's, it's always, uh, always out of reach, that final whatever happiness that they're looking for and success. But God gives true success good success. Amen? If we'll do it His way. 
and we'll take this wonderful map for life, and we'll read it, and we'll meditate on it, and apply it. Amen. That's good success. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, for God, for what you've done in our hearts. Thank you for these good verses, Lord, and Joshua, and the Psalms, God, that you've helped us with today. Uh, Lord, uh, may we remember, God, this week, Lord, to chew on your word spiritually. Uh, God, as you give us something in the morning, uh, may we chew on that all day, God, and walk with you and, and meditate on you, Lord, and your word, and so that we can then apply it and have that good success in our life and fulfill your purpose and your plan for us here and impact lives around us. Lord, thank you so much, God, for the, the blessing God is to be in your service. And you, God, are our true and rightful king. And God, we honor you and worship you today. Thank you again for your love to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming.